Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to finish off our room database. We will write our database class and also some more functions in our DAO object here, since I forgot that in the last video. Let's actually start with this here. Um, we are just missing a function to insert a subject and to insert an entry into our student subject cross-reference table. So let's copy this insert block here paste it twice, we name it to insert subject, and this one to insert student subject cross-reference. So remember, this is just a normal entity here in our table, so we also need a function to insert that into our table. Like this. And then we want to copy this block here, paste it twice. We want to have a query to get all students of a specific subject with a subject name. It will return subject with students. from the subject table where the subject name is equal to the subject name we passed. And here we want to get all subjects of a specific student, <laughs> not of a, of a student. It's so hard to write and talk at the same time. Um, student name. And this will return student with subjects. This will be our student table. Our student table. Didn't we make that an entity? Oh no, we didn't. Let's quickly change that. Now it's recognized where the student name is equal to the student name we pass here. Okay. Now we want to create our actual database, so we connect all of our entities, we um, tell it that we want to have this DAO object for our database and all that stuff. So in our root package, create a new Kotlin class, school database, that will not be a data class, instead an abstract class that inherits from room database. We need to annotate that with add database. And here in this annotation, we need to tell it which entities we actually want to have in that database. So here we just pass all of our entities as a list. First of all, we have our school double colon class. Then we have student double colon class. Import that, oops. Director double colon class. We have subject double colon class, and we shouldn't forget to also include our student subject cross reference here because that is also a table in our database. We need to specify a version for that database which is just used to, well, to recognize if there is actually an update available to your database. So basically, whenever you want to change your database schema, then you need to increase that version so that Room knows that you actually did that and that you can also migrate to your new schema. Okay, that's it for the annotation here. And then we need to have a reference, an abstract val to our school DAO. And then Room will actually implement that behind the scenes so that we can access that. And now we want to create a database singleton. So we only want to have a single database of that database we create here. And because that should be created in a thread safe way, we need to do that, of course, in a companion object because it's a singleton, but also with some additional configurations kind of. So first of all, we want to have a private var instance 
which is of type school database nullable and null by default and we annotate that with add volatile. So what does volatile mean? That means that writes to this variable so whenever we change the variable uh, the, the value of that instance here then this this change is immediately visible to other threads. So this will um, help us to prevent race conditions here. And then we want to have a function get instance that will just construct our database. It will return a school database. In here we will have a synchronized block. We use this as a log object here. So in case you don't know what synchronize does, it will basically just make sure that whatever we execute in this, uh, in this block of code here is only executed by a single thread. So we basically lock this, so our database class here, and make sure that no other thread can access this database class in the time where we are actually inside of that block here. And that is just to prevent that it could happen that two threads want to create the same database at once and in the end we wouldn't have a singleton instead we would have two instances and we don't want that and this get instance function actually needs an instance of our context our application context so that we can return our instance in here but if that is null which it will be for the first time then we want to construct our database with room dot database builder which will take the context here. So we pass context.applicationContext. It takes the class of our database, which is just school database double colon class Java. And the name just school db. And then we can call dot build and dot also because we also want to update our instance our singleton here with it, so with our just created database. And that is it for this database class. Now we can actually try that out, what we have worked towards to in the last videos. Um, in our main activity, we want to get reference to our DAO object, our school DAO, because with that object we can essentially access our database. So val DAO is equal to school database that get instance and we pass this and we want to refer to the school DAO of course and now I will actually paste a bunch of entries here that I want to um, insert into our database here I don't need to <laughs> show you that on video here so that is actually a lot so that we can actually try that out a little so we need to import all these values here you can see these are all just lists of entries that have values with which we can actually join these entries pretty well in our database and just demonstrate how this is working behind the scenes. So for example, you can see we have a student here, Beth Jesus, and he is in the second semester in Kotlin school. And if we now want to tell Room that this student, Beth Jesus here, visits a specific subject you can see we have a bunch of subjects here. Then we simply need to insert a relation here in our student subject relation class. So in this cross reference class here. So here we can say, okay, Bev Jesus visits the subject dating for programmers. He also visits the subject avoiding depression. He also visits bug fix meditation and so on and so forth. So whenever you want to basically tell room that one table one entry of one table is connected or related to an entry of another table and that is an n2m relationship as this student subject relation here is then you need to insert that additional entry here in that relation table so you can see also that i inserted all these entries here simply in a coroutine so when we launch our app now and take a look in the emulator well actually we don't need to take a look here because nothing will happen here in this emulator. But behind the scenes, all these entries were inserted into our database here. And if you're using 
Android Studio 4.1.1. Then there is this uh, cool new tool here, well, this database inspector down here. If you click on that and your app is also running in your emulator, then you can simply see that database here. So you can see we're currently inspecting this package name, multiple room tables, which is this app that is currently running. And you can see all the tables here that belong to our database. We can double click these to simply see the values that are inside of that table. So that is definitely a very cool upgrade here to Android Studio. So you can actually much better manage your database here or just check if the entries were inserted correctly. You can manually insert new entries here. You can change entries here. So that is pretty cool. You can see all these entries are now in our database. You can see these are the, the single columns. We have the rows, which just represent single entries. For example, in our student subject cross-reference, we have all the students and the corresponding subject this student visits. And here it is important to see that, well, if you remember, here in this class we had to mention or de declare these primary keys together in the entity annotation here. The reason for that is that in this relation, only the combination of these two values is actually unique. So you can see we have several rows here with the same student name and we also have several rows with the same subject name but there's only one row where Beth Jesus visits dating for programmers so that combination is actually unique here in this table so that is definitely a cool tool here now I also want to show you which is the last thing how we can actually query our database with our query functions also make sure to do that in this lifecycle scope. If you would launch a new coroutine here after that in a new lifecycle scope, then it could happen that the query is executed before the entries are actually inserted. So make sure to do it in this coroutine. For example, if we want to get a school with a director, we can now simply use our DAO.getSchool and director with school name. And we can pass, let's say our Kotlin school. And then with that object, you can see that this is actually a list. But in our case, this will only return one entry here because we query that by the school primary key. So let's just assume that we get a result here. So we can just call first. If this list would be empty, this would crash. But we know that there is a school with the name Cutland School. So we can just use school with director dot first and get access to the director and the school. So these are now joined together. And that of course also applies to our other queries that we created. So Val, let's say school with students. We want to get all the students who go to a specific school. We can get that by writing school with students and also pass Kotlin school, for example. And then we can access that school with students dot um, hello okay <laughs> first dot school and you can see now we get a list of students here because of course multiple students visit that specific school so that is essentially how working with multiple tables works in room and I really hope this series was helpful for you that you understood everything if not then put your question in the comments and when I find time I can answer this also, if you're looking for more advanced tutorials regarding Android, then you should check out the first link in this video's description where you will get to my website and there you will find premium courses that just take your Android skills to the next level. With the discount code PHILIP15, you will get 15% off of all courses. So just give it a shot, visit the website and take a look there. There is also a lot of free stuff. You get quizzes for all my videos that I made on YouTube completely for free just to test your knowledge. So thank you for watching this series. I wish you an awesome day. I see you in the next video. Bye bye.